Hello there. Welcome back to the channel. If you've not seen my channel before, if this is your first video of mine that you're watching, my name is Alyssa, and today we're going to be discussing ghosting. More specifically, how to stop ghosting people, why to stop ghosting people, and I'm even going to include a text template. Okay, I'm, I'm providing value here. Okay, that's what we're trying to do. Anyway, please excuse me if I sound congested and stuffed up. It's because I am. Okay, I've had like a chronic sinus infection since like December. Definitely should go to the doctor. I just, I don't want to take antibiotics. Like I'm just, I've already done like two rounds of antibiotics in the last year and I'm not. So I'm just trying to do tea and like all the natural stuff. Also, if you hear background noise, I'm gonna do the best I can with what I got, like Mariah Carey once said. I'll do the best I can with what I got. Oh. oh. So, ghosting. We've all experienced it, right? And it's so fun, right? <laughs> if you haven't been ghosted before, how does it feel? I'm curious. Congratulations, by the way. I love that for you. <laughs> so what is ghosting? If for some reason, if you've been living under a rock and you just don't happen to know what it is, I'm going to provide a definition from our trusted source, Urban Dictionary. <laughs> so the very first definition that comes up for ghosting is when a person cuts off all communication with their friends or the person that they're dating with zero warning or notice beforehand. You'll mostly see them avoiding friends' phone calls, social media, and avoiding them in public. So all joking aside, I want to share this information and I want to make this video because I want us to be more noble and more honorable. And that might sound a little... A little cringe or like what are you like 65 like why what, what are we doing why are we talking about this but as i'm sure you can see in society there are a lot of people who are degenerate to say the least and for me anyway i am on this personal journey with the lord trying to be a more honorable and noble person i want to be a proverbs 31 woman that is what i'm working on so i've been working on the last few years so if you feel the same way if you're in the same boat you are a young woman even maybe an older woman and you just want to get back on track you want to do the right thing and live your life in obedience to christ you want to be a noble honorable woman let's listen to what i'm gonna say and i don't say this coming from a place of i'm high and mighty and i know everything i just want to share some information that i've learned along the way and i hope that you can take something from it i'm also thinking that maybe this could be a series this could be like the first of a series like how to be more honorable and noble being a Proverbs 31 I don't know we'll, we'll figure out a title but that's kind of like where my head's at so ghosting it hurts it sucks and it breaks trust that you have with people like once it's happened to you you know it especially breaks trust that you have for the opposite sex and honestly it's just like so humiliating especially if it's happened to you repeatedly the same way that it's uh, happened to me so i will be discussing this mainly from like a romantic i guess point of view not so much platonic but obviously a lot of these things can apply to a platonic relationship now before we get like too deep into all of this i do want to offer another perspective i really hate to use this phrase but i'm just gonna do it so you get what i'm saying but to play devil's advocate i hate the devil okay i really do but to play devil's advocate i'm gonna offer another perspective now i understand why people do this in my time i can be honest and say that there have been maybe like one or two times when i did ghost somebody when i didn't know better um so i get it like i understand why people do this it appears like the easier thing to do so that you could avoid an uncomfortable conversation and that you can avoid hurting someone's feelings in the moment it feels like the right thing to do but i would argue that it's damaging to the person who is doing the ghosting not just the person who gets ghosted because really think about it like it can hurt your reputation it makes you look shady it makes you look so untrustworthy and honestly it just makes you look like a coward everyone who's ghosted me like i look at them like you're such a coward especially dudes 
I mean, I don't think it's good for anybody, but be a man, you know what I mean? <laughs> be a woman too. I would also argue that there are spiritual ramifications for dishonoring somebody by not being honest and upfront from the jump. The Bible even tells us that we reap what we sow, and I believe it's Galatians 6, 7. I'm gonna pull it up in just a sec so you can see it. Okay, here we go. I'll put it on the screen too. So Galatians 6, 7. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. All right? A spiritual law. So if you sow dishonor, lies, and manipulation, what do you think you're gonna reap in your life? Goodness? Blessing? Favor? <laughs> no. Like, be for real. <laughs> now, I know some people might be thinking like, oh, it's not that deep, it's not that serious. You know, it's always the it's not that deep community that like wants to insert themselves to try to downplay things and downplay behaviors and issues. But if you really think about it, like just think about like the pain that's inflicted on somebody when that happens, especially if you get ghosted, like even uh, talking to somebody for a long time like or hanging out with them or maybe even dating somebody and then out of the blue They completely ghost you that hurts so to, to downplay it and be like, oh, it's not that deep It's not that deep. It, like it is let's not kid ourselves It is so I do think that it's important that we take a more serious Approach to this rather than just kind of glossing over it all of our actions whether they are big or small do have an effect on our own lives but not just our own lives, but the lives of other people around us. So in our quest to be more honorable and to be more noble, it's important that we are choosing our actions wisely. Now those who are doing ghosting, or I guess just being dishonorable in general, but for the sake of the video, those who are doing the ghosting, they might not reap a bad harvest right away. Like you might think, oh, so-and-so ghosted me and everything seems to be going well in their life. Like, what are you talking about? These things can take time and eventually our actions, whether good or bad, will catch up with us. So these are just a few things to keep in mind the next time you are tempted to ghost somebody. Okay, so you might be asking, how then? How do I stop ghosting somebody? Like, what are the proper steps I should take? I'm glad you asked, okay? I have an answer for you. So maybe you want to be fair and upfront and honest, but you have a hard time communicating your feelings and you just don't wanna hurt somebody, which I totally get because that that's me, to a T. So to make this point, I am going to tell a quick story about how I recently actually turned somebody down without ghosting them. Even though I was tempted, I didn't do it. All right, so quick story time. It was around this past Christmas. This guy came into my work, he approached me, he was talking to me for a little bit, and he eventually asked me for my number. Before he asked me for my number, he was just making kind of like surface level conversation, asking about my work. He mentioned like, I'd love to take you to like lunch or dinner. He invited me to his game <laughs> and look, before he even approached me, I knew he played a sport and like it had to be basketball because he was super tall. So then when he was like, oh, like you should come to my game, that's when I realized, okay, he plays basketball. Now I'm not saying that to flex, I promise. It, there's a point that I'm gonna make in just a second. So to be honest with you, like he was not my type, not my type at all. <laughs> so in a past life, in my former life, before I changed. Knowing that he played basketball, knowing that he was in the NBA, former Alyssa would have been all over that. I would not have cared that he wasn't my type. I would have used all of the tools of manipulation to get what I wanted out of that situation because it would all be about like an image for me. That's what I used to do. That's what I used to chase. Dudes with status, with money, whatever. Like I wanted that. Former me would have been all over it. I'm reformed. I'm changed now, right? So I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Like I don't have that mindset. So while this guy's talking to me, asking me questions, wanting me to go out, give my number, da 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 da. In my head, I'm having this like internal struggle, internal chaos. On the outside, I'm somewhat cool, calm, and collected, but on the inside, I'm like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Like, 
I'm, I'm kind of freaking out, okay? You know, I'm thinking, is this guy even a Christian? He's probably not, because mo more than likely he's not. Most dudes just are not on that wavelength. And I'm also not attracted to him, but I don't want to be rude. He's being very nice and very respectful. It's not that, that that's an issue. I just, uh, what do I do? I'm having this inner monologue and like this internal chaos. I'm gonna be honest, I caved and I gave him my number because I was very flustered and I was like, I just kind of want him to go away. So I'm just gonna give him my number and I'll deal with this later. I don't know why I was hoping later wouldn't come, but later came and he did text me. So it was a total of three days, that is it, that we texted, but I was not giving a whole lot. He wasn't really either. Um, but like usually when I text like I'm very good at responding. I respond quickly I try to be fun bubbly whatever if I'm enjoying it, but I just I wasn't into it I wasn't really enjoying it and I did feel bad. I was like I cannot lead this guy on I can't do this So I'm like leaving hours between messages. I'm not being rude, but I'm also not being super into the conversation either so by day three of very dry text messages I decide okay this no more i'm i'm just gonna say what i need to say i'm not gonna ghost him like i'm tempted to do i'm just gonna be honest so i texted him and the text that i put together i think was very polite i was very direct to the point i was honest and i think i think it was good i was very proud of myself i think that texting this message is totally fine i know some people are gonna be like no like that's rude you need to say it directly to their face Let's, let's think about this for a quick second. How awkward is that? Especially if you've only been talking to them for like a little bit, maybe a few days. How awkward would that be to tell this person to meet up with you, for them to take time out of their day, for you to go meet up with them so you can tell them face to face, yeah, I don't like you, this isn't gonna work, after just a few days. I don't know about you, but I, I a text message will suffice as long as it's like polite and to the point i think it's fine the only exception i think is if you've been talking with this person or dating for like f some months at that point then yes absolutely talk face to face otherwise a text message is enough all right so here i'm going to share a text template i do not have the exact text that i sent to him because after i sent it i deleted the message i blocked the number so I, I don't have it anymore but i do kind of generally remember what i said so i put together a very brief template that you can use i'm going to put it up on the screen somewhere so that you can see so this is what it says and this is generally like what i told the guy hello hi whatever <laughs> i just want to be completely transparent with you and not waste your time i think you're a great guy however i don't see a relationship forming between us i appreciate your time and i appreciate you being kind and respectful i wish you the best easy done simple so simple so obviously you can adjust the text message according to your particular situation now i will say in my personal opinion i think less is more i think it's better to just be very direct obviously be kind in how you form your sentences you don't need to include details and all these excuses as to why and you don't need to apologize either just be direct and don't dig yourself into a hole <laughs> I think unless they ask for specifics, you don't need to get specific because getting too specific and detailed just opens the door for offense. And the last thing you want is somebody getting offended and then potentially having some vicious back and forth. Just don't. Don't open the door to that. Just keep it straight to the point. Kind, respectful, you're done. So these are my closing thoughts. I know it can be intimidating to do this sort of thing, especially if you're like me and you're the type of person who usually avoids difficult conversations, you're not great with confrontation, and you do want to be mindful of other people's feelings. It can be very intimidating to do this. But let me tell you, once you do, it's weirdly freeing. It makes you feel so much more 
confident and it builds this assurance within yourself that going forward you feel better and more confident to stand firm on what you think how you feel and just being honest and upfront with other people and i think another really great feeling is that you can walk away from the situation knowing that you were a stand-up person you were kind you were honest and you didn't waste somebody else's time not a lot of people these days can say that so in our pursuit of trying to be more noble and be more honorable, let's not be like everybody else. I know in a lot of situations, it's easy to say, oh, well, everybody does this or everyone does that. Everyone's doing it. But the thing is that we are not everybody. We are set apart and we're different. That is our goal, that is our aim, is to be set apart and to be different. And we respect ourselves and other people through and through. So that's it everybody. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found it helpful. If you do want me to do like a series, I think there's a lot of potential here. Like there's a lot of topics we could cover when it comes to being more honorable and being more noble. So if you have ideas, let me know. If you want to see more, let me know. I'm always open to that and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.